with your host, Dr. Bill Bushing. There is so much biodiversity here, I had trouble identifying all the fish species with certainty. I wonder if the fish need a field guide themselves to determine the proper mate. On top of which, many of the species wore masks, making it even harder to ID them. I will use common names, but keep in mind there may be several of them for a given species. The angelfish include the regal, emperor, blue and gold, six-banded, three-spot, and yellow mask. The diet of fish in this family varies quite significantly according to genus. Some are planktivores feeding on animal plankton, while others are algae eaters or munch on benthic or bottom-dwelling invertebrates. Many of these fish hide in the reef at night. Butterfly fish had very high biodiversity. Here on Catalina we have only one species in our waters but there were dozens in Palau. These included the chevron, dotted, eclipse or blue lash, long-nosed, Myers, ornate, oval spot, saddled, And if one saddle isn't enough, you can ride double on the Pacific double saddle. Pyramid. Raccoon. Reticulated, spot name, teardrop, thread fin. Sunburst, spot banded, and red fin. The bannerfish are also members of this family and included the humphead. Long fin, mast, and pennant.
Those that feed on coral are generally territorial. But plankton feeding species like the pyramid butterfly fish form schools. This group also hides in the reef at night. Although many think the Moorish idol belongs with one of the previous groups, it is actually the only living species in its own family. Reunions must get a bit boring. They feed on sponges, coral polyps, tunicates, and other benthic invertebrates, and also hide in the reef at night, with their bright colors turning much more drab. Generally solitary, they may also be found in pairs or small groups. This species was named for the Moors in Africa, who believed it was a harbinger of happiness. And I was happy to see them here, as I have in many other tropical places. Their larvae spend a very long time drifting in the plankton, which probably explains their wide geographical distribution. Spadefish are sometimes mistaken for angelfish due to the shape of their fins. Species include the golden, this appears to be a juvenile, William, this appears to be the pinnate spadefish, due to the extended snout. Oh, right. Here you see one being cleaned by a cleaner wrasse. Damselfish are related to California state marine fish, the Garibaldi, and are also cousins of Nemo. There are 30 species of anemone fish, also known as clownfish. These include the pink anemone fish and Clark's anemone fish. including its color variants. All form symbiotic relationships with species of anemones. The anemone receives fecal matter, which provides nutrients for the algae embedded in its tissues, and probably a little protection from the scrappy fish. The fish feeds on food scraps and gets some protection from the anemone's stinging cells, which they are immune to. All these fish are born male, and some develop into females, but can change gender back to male. The largest and most aggressive female is on top of the dominance hierarchy. Here you see an anemone fish guarding its nest, with the eggs laid on the flat stone. Sadly, most of the clownfish in the aquarium trade are captured from the wild. Another damsel I noticed was the golden damsel. The squirrelfish and soldierfish are in the same family, but separate subfamilies. I must admit, I find them difficult to tell apart, except for the shadowfin soldierfish. The squirrelfish feed mostly on small fish and bottom-dwelling invertebrates, while the soldierfish prefer a diet of zooplankton. Both groups remain mostly hidden in the reef during the day and feed at night thanks to their larger eyes. The spines on the gills of squirrelfish are poisonous. The species of big eyes look somewhat similar to the previous group. They are also called catalufa. They can undergo color and pattern changes, which make them difficult to positively identify for me as well. Like the squirrelfish and soldierfish, their large eyes allow them to feed at night, and the red color makes them less visible to predators then as well. This one has a parasitic isopod on its tail. The wrasses are a very diverse fish family, with over 600 species worldwide, 
The ones I filmed in Palau included the bird, red-breasted, clown chorus, barred thick lip, sling jaw, Napoleon, and cleaner races like the Blue Streak Cleaner, and Bicolor Cleaner. The cleaners usually use fixed cleaning stations that other fish visit to have dead skin, diseased tissue, and parasites removed. Most wrasses begin life as females, with some changing into males as needed, with the males often tending harems. Frequently there are color and pattern differences between juveniles, females, and males as seen here in the California sheephead from my waters. The Napoleon or humphead wrasse, also known as the Maori wrasse, is considered the largest member of this family. Males may reach six feet or more, while females are rarely larger than three feet, but the ladies may live 50 years while the men are old and feeble at 45. They are opportunistic feeders, taking fish, crustaceans, echinoderms, and mollusks, especially snails. Napoleon wrasse have been in decline due to take for the live fish trade for restaurants and the capture of young juveniles for aquariums. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN, list them as endangered, and many countries have banned or significantly limited their take. I'm sure they weren't actually served in this restaurant. This one is known as the Mayor of Blue Corner. Watch out, Todd. I think your bride, Christina, has found a new guy. Parrotfish are currently in their own family, although some consider them a subfamily of the wrasses. Species I filmed included the bumphead, and eclipse. Like the wrasses, the colors and patterns of their young, females, and males are often very different and all begin life as ladies. Male parrotfish also form harems. Sniff, I can't even find one lady. These are just my friends. However, their teeth are quite different from the wrasses as they are fused into a beak-like structure that gives them their name. Parrotfish feed on corals, but based on their long intestinal tract, it is believed that they are mostly herbivores capturing the tiny algae, or zoosanthellae, that populate coral polyps. They are major contributors to the creation of coral sand when they, um, er, excrete. Surgeon fish, a family that includes the surgeon fish, tang, and unicorn fish, is united by the presence of scalpel-like spines on either side of the base of the tail. Species I observed included the velvet surgeon fish. I know it as the white-cheeked surgeon fish. Pale-lipped surgeon fish. Big-nosed unicorn fish.
humpback unicorn fish. Hump nose unicorn fish. Orange spined unicorn fish. Spotted unicorn fish. And white margin unicorn fish. However, I did not see an orange tang like I did in the Philippines. These fish all have small mouths and feed mostly on algae. They may feed in groups as a defense against aggressive territorial damsels. Here you see a big nose unicorn fish being cleaned by a cleaner wrasse. They are able to change color from the beautiful blue to a dark brown in seconds. Turtles are rarely seen in the temperate waters surrounding my island, so they are a real thrill when I spot them elsewhere. The green turtle is the most common one in Palau, and the only other one I saw was the hawksbill. You can distinguish them by the plates or scutes on their back and head region, as well as by the shape of the carapace or shell. The green turtle has one pair of prefrontal scutes before the eyes, and there are two on the hawksbill. The green reportedly may reach four feet and weigh up to 500 pounds, making it the second largest after the leatherback. The young are carnivorous, but the adults feed primarily on algae, seagrasses, and other marine plant life, making them somewhat unique among sea turtles. The name comes from the color of their fat, not their shell. Green turtles are sexually mature between 20 and 50 years. Oh my! Females return to the same beaches where they were born and therefore may be highly migratory. Both the eggs and the meat are harvested by some cultures and the IUCN considers them endangered. The United States also listed them under the Endangered Species Act since they can be found in the San Diego region and occasionally up in Catalina waters. Other threats include entrapment in fishing gear. I'm not too pleased with this bad boy. We've all been taught never to rest our bodies on the reef. Hawksbill turtles have overlapping scutes on their carapace. They are solitary nesters that may lay eggs about four times a season. They feed mostly on sponges, but may also eat sea anemones, sea jellies, and algae. Hawksbill turtles were taken for their shells in the tortoise shell trade, but that is now banned. They are considered critically endangered by IUCN since their population has declined more than 80% in the last century. Well, that completes the critters I saw in Palau. Hey divers, what did you think of diving here? What? Just okay? I thought it was spectacular. After all the lovey-dovey stuff with our newlyweds Todd and Christina the first week, we decided to leave them out on Two Dog Island. However, watching them Bill and Coo reawakened feelings of romance in my solo diving, cold, scientific heart. Shucks! Even the butterfly fish were paired up. I got up my nerve, turned to the two lovely sisters I referred to as the Singapore Sirens, and asked each of them if they'd be in my harem, or, I mean, be my girlfriend. No, you're as old as my dad. No, you're older than my dad. I'll add your ages together and then we'll be okay. No, that's not gonna work. No. <laughs> well, 
at least I fell in love with Palau. And it has surpassed the Philippines and Tahiti as my new favorite destination. Although I could have gotten a visa to stay in Palau for a year, my return ticket gave me just two and a half weeks there. I checked out of the hotel, and Cheryl picked me up in the Palau Dive Adventures van and gave me a ride to the Palau airport. Our flight arrived late in Taiwan, so China Airlines staff rushed us to the security screening room, only to find the doors locked and no one had the key. It didn't matter because our Boeing 777's departure was delayed anyway. I made it back to the island the next day, back to cold water and long hours at my editing computer to bring you this video. Stay tuned for future dive travels of lonely Dr. Bill. Sniff.